Druidess, you have perfect timing as always. We've come to your part of the tale. Would you care to set the scene? Of course. I have been preparing to share this tale as I knew my part would be coming up soon. It has been some time since I told this story, so you'll have to forgive me if some parts come slowly. These things are not easy to talk about. I grew up in a part of the forest that was very far from here. My tribe tended to those lands for generations, and I was destined to lead my people one day. The war had not yet come to threaten our way of life, but the darkness was beginning to encroach on our territory. Even we, isolated as we were, could not escape its effects. Creatures fled. Blight started infecting some of the plants on the edges of our home. Most of our people wanted to flee, to find some other part of the forest to tend to, far from those who sought only destruction. Others argued that we should join with the Fae and fight against those who would poison our land. As I got older, each side tried whatever they could think of to bribe me or even threaten me into their way of thinking. No one cared to ask what I thought. No one except the son of one of the refugees who had joined our camp years ago. It was not uncommon for us to do such a thing, though few refugees made it out far enough to join us before running into someone else. One day, we ran into each other while sneaking out of camp for some reason I can no longer remember, and when we got caught, we covered for each other. And from that day on, we were fast friends. He was one of those few people in the tribe who didn't treat me differently because of my title. I came to trust him completely and then one day to love him. He was the only one who asked me what I thought the tribe should do. So I told him. I told him of my idea to prepare ourselves to be a peacekeeping force. I wanted us to provide an example to the humans and the Fae, to show them a way to live outside of war. I even dreamed of being the one who brought peace to both sides and brought an end to the war that had consumed so much already. It was such a silly dream at the time, but I held on to it tightly and I told no one else. He helped me work out the plan of how we would make the dream a reality, becoming a voice that both sides could listen to. He began to speak more eagerly of the influence that we would have as it drew closer to the day I would take my place as the head of the tribe. Part of the ceremony to take up the mantle of leader included a hunt, which I was allowed to bring one other on. I chose him, of course, because he was to be my mate and lead by my side. Everything went well until we ran into a defector who was so on edge that they attacked without provocation. I was grievously wounded, and they were killed before they had time to realize what happened. My love got me back to the camp as quickly as he could, but by then, I was barely hanging on. The healers did all they could over the next few days, but while I was stable, they knew my chances of recovery were slim. They were all so afraid of what could happen should they lose me that they decided to do something incredibly reckless. Even as a last option, it was a terrible idea. But they did it anyway. In a collection of relics the hunters had uncovered were the components of a ritual. The elders had pieced together the ingredients needed, as well as a rough translation for the ritual itself. It spoke of empowerment and life after death, but much of the writing remained untranslated after that. If only they had taken more time to understand the cost of what they were doing, maybe they would have chosen differently. They completed the ritual, and from what I could tell, they did everything right. But it cost every single one of them their lives and left me immortal and bound to a dark spirit could no more harm me than I could get rid of it. I spent much time trying to piece together what happened, trying to see if there was some way that I could bring them back. Maybe I could give my life and undo what had been done, but in the end... I had to come to terms with the fact that there was no going back. Whether they meant to or not, my people had given everything to give me the chance to bring an end to the war. So I packed up whatever I could salvage, laid the dead to rest, and left my home for the final time. For years I would wander, keeping on the outskirts of civilization, trying to find something that could end the war. And one night, I woke up to find others sheltering in my cave. 
I would have paid them no mind had I not heard their conversation and realized that this might be the chance I was looking for. So I made myself known. And nearly ended up with a knife in your kidneys, which I would not have been sorry for at the time. But since then, you've learned the importance of being sneaky. This part of the journey was uneventful, and soon we ended up at the Hermit's abode. You have been listening to Ceasefire, the story of the end of a war that did not end the world. This story was written and produced by Priyana Jean as part of Pseudonym Social, a creative podcast network changing reality one story at a time. In this episode, you can hear the voices of Brianna Jean as Vivian, Jordan Marie as the Druidess. You can support all of our productions over at patreon.com slash pseudonym social. To get more information on this or any of our other shows, check out our website at pseudonymsocial.com.